So you looked at multiplying decimals. Next section is what about if we divide them? It's very similar. We pretend just as if they're whole numbers, but our very first step is to always make note of where our decimal is. So important, important, important. Very first step, we want to make note of the decimal. So in all of these cases, that's the first thing that we're going to do. Make note of where the decimal is. So let's take 255 and divide it by 5. 255 divided by 5. So let's do the longhand division, and we'll make note of where these decimals are, even though we're dealing with whole numbers. So we know how to handle this. The larger one that we're trying to divide up goes on the inside, and the smaller one that we're trying to break it up by goes on the outside. And always, 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 very first, make note of where the decimal is inside of our large number on the inside here. So where is the decimal point on 255? All the way on the right. If one isn't written there for us, we can draw it in. So what does this mean? Make note of the decimal wherever the decimal sits inside of our long division. That's where the decimal needs to sit in our quotient, in our answer piece as well. So that's our very first step, and that's all that's different from dividing whole numbers with decimals. Okay. So these are whole numbers, but we've written in the decimal, and let's see what it produces. 5 doesn't go into 2, so 5 goes into 25, 5 times. 5 times 5, we get 25. It's a difference of 0. Bringing down what's next, how many times can 5 go into 5? Once, and we have no remainder. So our answer then in the end here is then what? 51 point nothing, so just 51, okay? But again, we have the practice of where to find the decimal. So what about if we take 270.2 and we want to divide that by 7? So again, the larger one goes on the inside, 270.2 divided by 7 on the outside. And we'll make note of where the decimal is. It sits down here in my dividend divisor, dividend, and it's going to live in the same spot inside of my quotient, inside of our answer in the top, so we make note of where it is, then we just behave as normal. 7 doesn't go into 2, but 7 can go into 27, how many times without going over? I think 3. 7 times 3 is 21, yep, difference of 6. Bringing down what's next, 7 goes into 60, how many times without going over? So 7 times 7 is 49, 7 times 8 is 56, that'll get us there. So 8 times 7, we get 56, which is a difference of 4, bringing down what's next. So now we can see where our decimal point is, we're moving past that now, it goes in 38 whole times, but we have a little bit uh, left over. 7 into 42, how many times? 6 exactly, difference of 0. Okay, so when we take 270.2 and divide it by 7, we get 38.6. And how could we check this? It's been a while since we've run through a check. But with division, we can always check with multiplication. So what are we going to be multiplying together? Our answer, 38.6, we want to multiply that by our divisor, times 7, and make sure we get out 270.2. So let's just check. 6 times 7, what do we get? 42. And 7 times 8 is 56, plus another 4 will give us 60. 7 times 3 is 21, plus another 6 will give us 27. And how many decimal points do we actually have to move in? One decimal point in the top value, zero in the bottom, so we have to move in one. So we get 270.2. We're just practicing what we just worked on as well. So it checks out. We made it. So all that's different is our very first step is to just make note of where the decimal is inside of our, um, our answer. So we're just going to practice a lot of different division problems. We'll do an application in the end and you'll be on your way. So what about if we take a negative number, like negative 5.98, and we try to divide it by 115? What about that case? So I've got a negative divided by a positive. So what type of number is that going to produce, first of all? Negative. So let's just make note that our answer is going to be negative. Then we don't have to deal with having a negative sign inside of our long division. 
So now let's take 5.98, goes on the inside, and again we hack off the negative because we already know our answer is going to produce a negative, and on the outside we're trying to divide by 115. Very first step, where is our decimal point down here? It needs to be in the same place in my answer. Okay, hard part's over, now we know how to handle it from here. 115 is large, so we'll probably have to write off a couple multiples over here to see how close we can get. 115 doesn't fit into 5 or 59, so we're looking to 598 first. So this is how my brain works and how I would um, handle a problem like this. 115 is close to 100. So if I take 100, 100 times what will get us close to 500? and 98 if I multiply by 5. So let's start off with and check and see what 115 times 5 will actually produce. Should get us pretty darn close to this value, but let's see. So 5 times 5, we get 25. 5 times 1, we get 5, plus 2, 6, 7. 5 times 1, we get 5, 575. Now, if I added another 115 to this, would I overshoot 598 by a long shot? Yes. So, 115 can go into 598 five times without going over. Okay, so it didn't fit into 5, so we'll plug in a 0 there, part of our answer. 115 didn't fit into 59, so 0 times it went in there. But how many times can 115 go into 598 five without going over? And 5 times 115, we get 575. We want the difference of those two. 8 minus 5, we get 3. 9 minus 7, we get 2. 5 minus 5, 0. Gone. So, what's next? 115 doesn't fit into 23. We want to bring down what's next, but there isn't anything to bring down. So, what can we always add on to the back of anything without changing it? Our decimal, anyway. A 0. So, we'll add one on. And now we want to see how many times can 115 fit into 230 without going over. So once is just 115. Twice is going to be a little bit larger than 200, so let's start there and see what we get off on the side. 115 times 2. 2 times 5, we get 10. Carry the 1. 2 plus 1, we get 3. 2 times 1, we get 2. Exactly twice. Goes in 2 times, we get 230. It's a difference of 0. So when we would divide the... Bleh. So when we divide this, what do we get? I got negative divided by positive will produce negative of what value? Negative 0 0.052. And we could always check by multiplying, make sure that we get there. Okay, so one for you to try. Pause the video, try the division, take 15.89 and divide it by 14. You're probably going to have to write off on the side a couple of the multiples. Don't rely on the calculator because you're not going to have it on an exam. Okay, so first of all, 15.89 goes on the inside of our long division. 14 is on the outside. Make note of where the decimal is. And then we start asking how many times can 14 fit into these different things. So 14 into 1 doesn't fit. 14 into 5 goes in once, which is a difference of 1. Bringing down what's next. 14 goes into 18 once without going over. 18 minus 14, we get a difference of 4. 14 doesn't fit in there, bringing down what's next. 14 into 49, how many times? So 14 times 2 is 28, it's too small. So let's look a little larger. Times 3, what do we get? 4 times 3, we get 12. Carry the 1, we get 42. Small. What? Let's go one larger just to see. We might use it in the end anyway. 4 times 4, we get 16. 4, we get 56. Okay, so times 4 was too large. So 3 is the largest that we can work with right now. 14 times 3, we get 42. 9 minus 2, we get 7. Bringing down what's next, we have to add on a 0. 14 into 70, how many times? So our last multiple was by 4, and that got us to 56. So let's look at if we multiply by 5. 5 times 4, we get 20. 5 times 1, we get 5, plus another 2, we get 7. 
We got 70. It goes in five times exactly. Okay. Value in the end, is it positive, is it negative? Positive divided by positive is a positive. We get 1.135. We could check by multiplying. Multiply these two. We should get out this value. So in all the cases that we've seen so far, the number that we're dividing by has always been a whole number. But what if it's not? For example, what about if we take 1.976 and we try to divide it by 0 0.16. So I've got a decimal divided by a decimal instead of just a decimal divided by a whole number. Then what happens? So let's set it up like normal. 1.976 on the inside and we're dividing by 0 0.16. But we don't know how to handle it if there's a decimal out here. So we want to get rid of that first. And then once we do, we just behave as normal. So in this case, to turn 0.16 into a whole number, how many decimal places would we have to move? Two. So I'd have to move two here to get to a whole value. And whatever I do in this number, I also have to do to our inside number over here. So 0.16 is now going to become 16. I had to move two decimal places to the right. So I also have to take my decimal point here and move it two to the right. So now this is becoming what? I'm dividing by 16 on the outside. And 1.976 now becomes 197.6. Okay, so now that we have a whole value on the outside, make note of the decimal, then we just behave as normal. So whenever we have a decimal value that we're trying to divide by, we just want to move the decimal point in each to make it a whole value again. So what happens? Start doing the math. 16 into 19 goes once. Difference of 3. Bringing down what's next. Let's write off some of the multiples. 16 times 2, we get 32. 16 times 3, what does that produce? Let's see. 6 times 3, we get 18. Carry the 1, we got 48. Too large, so it goes in twice without going over. 37 minus 32, we get 5. Bringing down what's next? 16 into 56, how many times? Well, multiplying by 3 gave us 48, so let's take 16 times 4. See what that produces. 6 times 4, we get 24. 4 plus 2, we get 64. Okay, in this case, overshot. So the largest number of times that 16 can go into 56 is this 48. So three times. Three times 16, we get 48. And what's the difference between those guys? We're going to have to borrow. 16 minus 8, we get 8. Bring in down, what's next? What can we throw in that we need? A 0. And 16 into 80, how many times? Multiplying by 4 got us to 64. Let's multiply by 5. See what we get there. 6 times 5, we've got 30. 5 times 1 plus 3, we get 80. So 16 goes into 80 five times exactly. So in the end, our answer in this case then is what? 12.35. And we don't have to go back and move the decimal in our answer because what we did here, we did over here as well. So as long as we're consistent, however many decimal places we have to move in our divisor, we also have to move in the dividend to get us there. So answer in the end, 12.35. How could we check it? This one times this one has to equal that one. We always have a check in this class. So what about if I try to take 20 and I divide it by 0 0.04? Let's set it up. Long hand. 20 goes on the inside, we've got 0 0.04 on the outside. To get 0 0.04 to a whole value, we'll have to move two decimal places. Whatever I do to one, I have to do to the other. So 20, my decimal point currently sits here. So if I move it two to the right, now I'm going to live over here and we can fill in with zeros. So in reality, this is turning into what? 2,000 divided by 4. Same math, it will still produce the same result as if we had kept that decimal. But since we moved to here and to here, we won't have to move anything in the end. So in our answer, where's our decimal point going to sit? Make note of where it is, and let's start answering those questions. 
4 into 2 doesn't fit. 4 into 20, it goes 5 times exactly. And then what? 4 doesn't go into 0. 4 doesn't go into 0. And we stop at our decimal point. So what do we get out in the end? 20 divided by 0 0.04 is 500. So whenever we have a decimal out front, we need to take it and move it. And whatever we do to our divisor, we also have to do to the dividend. And lastly, example-wise, what about if I take a negative and divide it by a negative number? So negative 3.6. If I want to divide that by negative 0 0.9, very first thing to do in this case, since we've got negatives involved, let's figure out what kind of sign we're going to have in the end. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, so we'll make note of it. Then we don't have to deal with the negatives anymore. So what lives on the inside? 3.6. And on the outside, 0 0.9. We need this to be a whole number. To get it to be a whole number, we have to move how many decimal places? One. Whatever I do there, I also have to do here. So now this is becoming 36 divided by 9. And 9 goes into 36 how many times? 4, exactly, without going over. So when I take a negative divided by a negative, I get a positive. 3.6 divided by 0.9 gives us 4. And again, we could check with multiplication if we really wanted to. Okay. So in the last section, we multiplied by factors or multiples of 10. And when we did that, what happened? Do we make the number larger or smaller when I multiply by 10? So when we're multiplying by factors of 10, it makes the numbers larger. So all of those, the decimal points, are moving to the right. So these decimal points move to the right whenever we're multiplying by multiples of 10. So if I multiply by 10, it moves 1 to the right. By 100, it moves 2 to the right. By 1,000, it moves 3. You get the idea. So we handle that. What about if we divide by 10? We haven't looked at those cases yet, but what's going to happen? If I divide by 10, am I making the, the number larger or smaller? I'm dividing it by 10, so I'm making it smaller. And when I make the number smaller, how do we do that? Take the decimal point and move it to the left, the other direction. So if I take, for example, 235.96. If I multiply by 100, what is this going to produce? Or what is it going to do? Take the decimal point and move it how many? Two to the right. So this is going to produce what? Take it, move it two to the right. 235.96. Now that we have our decimal point, we can put in our comma, 23,596. Took the decimal point, move it to the right. But if we take that same number, 235.96, and divide by 100 instead, and making the number smaller, and again, how many decimal places do we have to move? Two. But in this case, we move two to the left. So now this becomes 2.3596. So dividing by multiples of 100 moves to the left, makes the number smaller. Multiplying by multiples of 100, or 10, moves to the right, makes the number larger. So where do we ever use this stuff in real life? Last example. Let's say you are painting uh, a room. Painting a room and a gallon of paint, one gallon, a gallon of paint can cover... 250 square feet. One gallon can cover 250 square feet. And you have a wall and it measures 1,450 square feet. If your wall measures 1,450 square feet, how many gallons are you going to need? How many gallons are needed. So how do we handle it? One gallon can cover 250 square feet, but we have 1450 to cover. 
So I need to figure out exactly how many 250s can fit inside of 1450. So we're taking our 1450 square feet that we need to cover, and we're trying to figure out exactly how many times 250 can fit inside of there. These are whole numbers, but again, let's make note of where our decimal is, because we don't know that it's going to divide exactly. So the decimal underneath our long division lives all the way on the right, so we'll make note of where that is. And we have to start asking questions. 250 doesn't fit into 1, 14, 145, so we have to look into 1450. So 250 times what? Times 2 is going to be small, times 3 is still going to be small, times 4, you could try if you really want to. Um, I'm just going to start at 5. 250 times 5. Okay, and why should we start there? I know that 200 times 5 is 1,000, and it has to be more than that. So let's just start with 5 and see how close we get. 5 times 0, we get 0. 5 times 5, we get 25. 5 times 2, we get 10, plus another 2 is 12. So I've got 1250. Could we put another 250 on top of that? Let's just see. 250 times 6. Let's do that math. 6 times 0, 0. 6 times 5, we get 30. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus another 3, we get 15. Too large. So 250 can go into this value 5 times without going over. 5 times 250, we get 1250. And what's the difference between those two? We get 0, 0, 2. 200. So this doesn't fit into 200. When we bring down what's next, we can add on a 0. And how many times can 250 fit into 2,000? So 250 times 6 was too small. So let's take 250, multiply by 7, see if that works. 7 times 0, we get 0. 7 times 5, we get 35. 7 times 2, we get 14, plus another 3, 14, 15, 16, 17. 1750 is still too small, so let's see if 8 will fit. Times 8. 0 times 8, or 8 times 0, we get 0. 8 times 5, we get 40. 8 times 2 is 16, plus another 4, we get 20. 2,000. We got there. 250 times 8 will get us to 2,000. And what does this mean, then? If one gallon of paint covers 250 square feet, we are going to need 5.8 gallons to cover our, our wall, just in one coat, I'm assuming. Who knows? They didn't tell us. To cover 1450 square feet. But, can you actually buy 0.8 of a gallon? No. You could probably buy a quart if you really want to, but if we're just talking in terms of purchasing gallons, that's the only um, volume that you can actually buy, then are we going to have to round up or are we going to have to round down? That's the question we need to have. So 5.8 gallons are needed. But if we can only purchase gallons, and it's probably safe to say we're going to need more than that anyway, we're going to have to round up at least six. So in this case, we want to buy six gallons in order to cover our 1,450 square feet. 